Today we're taking a look at upgrading all of the fans in my Ryzen 7700X gaming PC. The test bench here consists of the Be Quiet Pure Bass 500FX and the Be Quiet Pure Loop 2FX 280mm water cooler. This is a powerful cooling combination, but I'll be swapping out all of the Light Wings fans for the Silent Wings 4 Pro fans thanks to Be Quiet. Before we dive into the temperature testing, we should take a look at the specs on the Silent Wings 4 Pro. These are the 140mm fan version. They have an operating speed range from 400 RPM all the way up to a blistering 2400 RPM. These fans have a built-in switchable PWM compatible speed controller that allows for either a medium speed of about 1100 RPM max, a high speed of about 1900 RPM max, and an ultra high speed, which goes to 2400 RPM max. At maximum speed, these fans will put out 97 CFM with a static pressure rating of 3.6 millimeters to H2O. The trade-off here is that these fans will output about 36 dBA at full blast. Now that we know the specs on the fans, let's take a look at the temperature testing. The ambient temperature in the setting was about 22 C, and all tests were run for about one hour each. Since these fans have three maximum RPM modes, that's what I tested. We'll take a look at the performance for each mode on my Ryzen 7700X and RTX 3060 Ti gaming rig. I started off the testing with the ASUS RealBench benchmark. The 1100 RPM mode produced an average core temp of about 90.9 C, with a clock rate of 5.05 GHz. The 1900 RPM mode saw a core average of 87.4 C, and an average clock rate of 5.07 GHz. The 2400 RPM UHS mode averaged 84.9 C, with an average clock rate of 5.1 GHz. I don't have super accurate sound testing, but the sound meter app on my phone, at about 3 feet of distance, measured an average of 30.4 dBA at the medium speed, 41.5 dBA at the high speed, and 48.5 dBA at the ultra high speed. The RTX 3060 Ti GPU did benefit from this fan upgrade as well. The medium test saw the GPU core average 68.5C with a clock rate of 1910MHz. The high speed test averaged 68.4C at roughly the same core speed and the ultra high test averaged 65.7C at 1925 MHz, so a little bit of an uplift there. Moving on to the ADA64 CPU stress test, in the medium speed test, the cores averaged 82.3C at 5.1 GHz, while the high speed test averaged 81C at 5.15 GHz. The ultra high speed obviously wins, with an average of 78.9C at an average clock rate of 5.2 GHz, so a little bit more of an uplift there. As for gaming performance, I used the TimeSpy benchmark to get an idea of what kind of gains the system could see. For the medium speed test, the system got an overall TimeSpy average score of 11,493, with an average GPU score of 11,241. The average CPU score was 13,107. The high speed test saw a little bit of a bump in average scores to 11,503 overall, 11,239 for the GPU, and 13,205 for the CPU. The ultra high speed test enabled an average overall score of 11,519 with a GPU score of 11,265 and a CPU score of 13,275. These aren't huge bumps in terms of gaming performance, especially when you consider the sound increases, but we were running at stock speeds and stock voltages. We would definitely see larger gains in manual overclocking, but you still have to decide if the extra sound is worth it. In my opinion, the sweet spot for performance and sound is the 1100 RPM mode in the Silent Wings 4 Pro fans. But if you need fans and you have the budget, the Silent Wings 4 Pro fans are really slick. I would definitely recommend them based on the performance alone. These fans aren't just high performers though. They include switchable modes in terms of the fan speed as well as PWM support. They have a premium overall feel on the fan body and the sleeved cable. They do come with noise dampening mounts and they're mostly black, which I actually think is going to look good in most gaming builds. As I mentioned before, these fans run pretty quiet in the medium speed mode 
which did produce decent overall cooling. The faster modes allow for better cooling, but you are trading off a little bit of sound in order for that performance. I think these fans are going to appeal to a lot of gamers out there. I know I enjoyed working with them, and I'll probably reuse them in future builds on the channel. If you like this one, hit that thumbs up button, and if you're interested in more videos like this, get subscribed to the channel.